Hi everyone. As always, the only question that matters, can you hear me? <laughs> I just checked it, but I will never not live in fear after that one time. <sighs> so I hope that you all had the chance to read Snagglepuss, everything. My husband was using my rig, so everything's all changed. The angles of all of the things are not what I'm expecting them to be. <laughs> so reorienting, reorienting myself. So today we are doing, we're doing, we're talking about Snagglepuss Chronicles. Oh, do you see those little tufts poking out? I was midway through rereading it and taking notes because I actually have notes for this because I wanted to be a bit more organized this time and there were some points that I really wanted to hit. So I took notes, but also there were just some lines that I really liked that if we have time, I'll get to, but I didn't have post-its. <laughs> and so... Instead of, you know, I don't know, ordering post-its, I just got some tissue paper and tore it up into little pieces and stuck them in the book. So I'll have to flip through and it'll be a pleasant surprise which pages I highlight. <laughs> That's see, every time we step it up a little bit, this time we have lighting. So the lighting is a lot better. Next time we'll have post-its. It's just moving on up in the world. Maybe someday the cape will be out of the bag. Just, you know, life things. <laughs> so, how many of you had the chance to read it? I put it up for the vote, and I know some people were surprised when it won, but pleasantly surprised. So, it's always, there's so much to talk about with this and the whole, everything about the Hanna-Barbera universe, how this came about, the, the angle that it took. There is so, so much to get to in it. So, I'm going to wait for couple more people to pile on in so that we don't miss any of the, the juice. <laughs> this the snaggle puss, the puss. I don't know. <laughs> I got that a lot. Some people said they were like, I didn't even know that this existed. <laughs> See, that's what this is all about. Finding comics that you may not have known existed because, you know, once a comic comes out, it gets that push for the first little bit. And then unless it's one of those big ones that sticks around forever. Everybody just forgets about it. And it's like, what? There were Hanna-Barbera comic books? Yes. Yes, there were. <laughs> Jensen, I have so much to say. <laughs> okay. So I guess we can start with some, the layup, the build up to talking about it itself by talking about the Hanna-Barbera universe. So this one specifically came out in 2018 and it's part of the Hanna-Barbera Beyond initiative that DC was doing at the time, which was taking the Hanna-Barbera properties, properties, see, I can't talk, properties, which they also own and doing some reimagining of them in comic book form. So all of the books are doing something a little different. Some of them go further than others. Like this is one of the ones that takes a more different approach, but it's also still in line with the character's history and the way the character's history has been read, which we'll get to in a little bit. It didn't go as far as say Scooby-Doo Apocalypse, which also funnily enough was the most well-received one. <laughs> Where it's like, you remember Scooby-Doo and how they solve mysteries? But what if it, instead of that, it was the apocalypse. Let's apocalypse tie, apocalypse now. <laughs> That's what the people want. This one is by Mark Russell with art by um, Mike Feehan, Mike Fahan. I never, I'm never sure. I'm never sure. I never know how to say anything, so it's fine. But he also did the Flintstones one. And then he also gave us the six issue mini of the Snagglepuss Chronicles. So base, let's do a brief plot overview because this is one of those comics where if you describe it to people, it sounds like not a lot happened. It, you can describe it in a couple of sentences because a lot of what occurs in it and what makes it so interesting is the character work and the themes that it is working through. And it is working through a lot of things. There are a lot of different things going on from the, the closeted culture to acting and like theater versus film stars versus actors. There's just so many things. This is one of those ones that it's better upon reread. Like I thought I liked it. The spoiler alert. I liked it. Um, so if it's one of those ones that you read it and it's good, but it has so many layers that 
it merits a reread. And then you see things that you didn't potentially get on the, the first time through, or you can focus on other aspects of it that you potentially didn't get to because, you know, your heart was being ripped out of your chest because it's a huckleberry hound or all of that. So basically, Cliff notes, Snagglepuss Chronicles is about Snagglepuss, who is a gay Southern playwright who has been writing plays that because of McCarthyism and the un-American like trials have been deemed slightly subversive. And he is someone who is being targeted to either have to be blacklisted or blacklist his friends in the industry. So basically the comic follows that and the people in his life. So his wife, his best friend, Huckleberry Hound, and the relationships that he is dealing with after his wife catches him cheating and finds out that he's gay. And there's just a whole layers, layers upon layers. But again, if you were to tell people about it, it would just be like, oh yeah, so he uh, he writes plays and he kind of has to go to trial. So it, does, it doesn't sound like a lot, but, but it is basically. Before we dive deep, deep, into any themes i want to talk about some of like the the stuff i like about like the packaging and the binding and the way it's laid out so at the back do, 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 do. we're getting all proper review on this at the back you have a variant cover gallery which i like because i like all the variant covers for this this is even one of the ones that i posted in the community tab. And I think my favorite response to it was, am I attracted to Snagglepuss? <laughs> my favorite variant though has to be this one. It's actually what I used as the faded background for for the thumbnail for this because it's beautifully drawn and you can see the, like, the hook coming to grab him off, which is perfect for the last issue where he gets blacklisted. These are, this, these are good covers. These are very good. Also very appreciative because this is dealing with actual historical events and some historical people and working them in. So it tells you about them. Like it tells you about Snagglepuss. It tells you who is inspiring his, like his character in this book, which is a uh, Tennessee Williams. It tells you all about Huck like Huckleberry Hound and who's inspiring him, the, the Stonewall, all of the different places and events that, and which issue they're in. So if you're not familiar with them, then you can have a bit of a bit of groundwork. So that's nice because you might be jumping in, you know, completely blind. Who knows? So <laughs> you never know where someone is coming from. So that was very much appreciated. Yes, I think we're ready. Are we ready to talk about? Well, also, here's the thing. One of the things I hear a lot about this is why. Why, why take this angle? Why would you do this, do Snagglepuss? Well, here's the th firstly, for a reimagining of these characters, Snagglepuss's cartoon was pretty simple. It, you know, he wanted to make his cavern look nice and have nice things. So he was always trying to get schemes and do stuff that would do that. And they never worked out. He was always unsuccessfully hitting on Lila. And sometimes that hunter major minor was was hunting him down so it wasn't exactly a, a ripe field for doing something with so i thought that it was very very clever to take the long held assumption read that the character was coded as gay which has been going on for a long long time it is not a new concept in fact when you see parodies of snagglepuss that is often the angle that they take. There was even one as recently in 2008 that an SNL skit about it and it's happened drawn together, robot chicken. So this is an idea that has been out there for <laughs> quite some time. So for some people who may be like, what? what are you talking about? Coding, what, where, why? So some of the things are the presentation style of the way that, that he spoke and the kind of lilting vaudevillian theatrical voice that he was given his his dapperness and his little his little collar and just all of the things combined presented an image that people could be like I I recognize that that's a that's a thing and the thing is whether it was intentional or not that has become the read that is pervasive and has very much become part of the character in a way like it's part of how the character is viewed and interpreted so I thought that this was 
very, very, a very clever way to take it. And the fact that I did it so seriously, this book gets serious and dark. And also something I enjoy, nuanced, 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 which is very, very, you know, up my alley. I love me some nuanced work. I do not need a smack to the face. <laughs> Get enough of those already. All right. Enough of those in the comments already. So we start off with the first time that he faces the hearing. And what you get out of this is that he's very quick witted, very clever, has an answer for everything. They can't, they can't pin him down to anything. He's just, you know, too smooth and cool for school, basically. And you see also in this opening, what's very important, how he's developed his outlook on art and the theater, which is he was working behind the scenes at this not that great show and a fire breaks out. And so he runs on stage to try and tell the people, oh my God, the building, it's on fire. But everybody just laughs and nobody believes him. And they think that it's just part of the show. So he gets this idea about entertainment. The people are coming and no matter what you do, they just want to be entertained. And so it shapes the way that he creates his work going forward from that point. So that is a very cool element. I also, oh, one of my little, one of my little tufts fell out. <laughs> classy. <laughs> Only class. Only the classy, classy comics. There we go. So also when he, there's a line here and I saved this page for a reason, which is because I like what he says here about fighting battles. You don't fight them because you expect to win. You fight them merely because they need to be fought. And I really like that. And very cool. And sometimes I'm so inarticulate. This is why everything I do is scripture. <laughs> you see here when we start the proper first issue of Exit Stage Left, which is also very clever because that is one of his catchphrases that in Heavens to Murgatroyd and saying, even at the end of everything. He could be hurt even. So you see here that he's married to Lila, which is his love interest in um, in the show. There are lots of little elements that kind of make it almost like a meta layer to the show itself. For example, this is starting in 1953 in the story and ends in 1959 with him ending up on TV on the quick draw McGraw show, which is where the character debuted in 1959. So that is a very nice, clever detail. I like, you know, little, it's all coming together. Thought, thought was applied to this. <laughs> thought was applied. So you see here that his, his work is very, like, it's very visceral. It's very rough. It's really dealing with intense character work and motivations and he's working through some of his own history and the like and just things that he's seen growing up so it's very very raw his work is very very raw and i did save this page too my tuft also fell out but you all need to see every time the tuft falls out because that's going to happen every single time so when he's in the car talking to his wife and he, she says, they love you. And he says, they don't even know me. And I like the line that it says here, which is you only know a man by seeing the parts he doesn't show you, which is, you can, you can also apply that to so much in the superhero genre as well. Part of like why we like the characters because we, we know them, we see the parts that other people don't. And that's it's very cool. So after that, you see that they split off and they go their separate ways. She goes home and he goes to the village to meet his boyfriend who his boyfriend was also an interesting character who I enjoyed because he was having his own struggles. That was the thing. All the characters in this, it's not purely a Snagglepuss style work. They all have their own things going on. And Snagglepuss isn't perfect either. He doesn't handle everything correctly. The way he deals with his boyfriend's fears about what's going on in his home country kind of drive him away and drive him back there because it makes him feel like a coward and like he should be doing something, you know, for the revolution. <laughs> This was uh, trying to organize all of all of the thoughts and the depth and do it live. <laughs> ben, yes, it has been. <laughs> so I think for me, 
the most devastating plot in this was definitely Huckleberry Hounds. So in this, him and Huckleberry Hound are childhood friends. Uh, they're both gay. They're both closeted. But he, but Snagopus leaves to go to the city to write his plays to pursue this kind of life and have kind of this dual life where he's presenting himself as straight, even though you sh you see later on that a lot of people aren't really going for it. And they actually use him as an excuse when they're cheating. So they are like, oh no, like she was with him and presenting it as the idea that, well, everybody knows, which is something that makes him really upset. But Huckleberry Hound's tale is that he's this writer and he was trying to live the quote unquote normal life. He had a wife, he had a son. And then when she finds out He's kicked, he's just kicked out. He can't see her anymore. He can't see his son anymore. He loses everything and he moves to the city to be with Snagglepuss. And Snagglepuss is trying to show him, like, no, like you can still be happy. Like he takes him to the stone wall and shows him, like, oh, there are people out living their lives. Like you could, you could have this, basically. And the way it works out for Huckleberry Hound is just so devastating because he falls for quick drama gras who's one of the cops who patrols the area but who is himself gay and so is on the take and he's just you know taking money and not really reporting any of the things that's going on and then when the club is ultimately raided he finds himself having to turn on huckleberry hound and he smacks him calls him a slur arrests him and it's horrible and ultimately Huckleberry Hound ends up taking his own life. And it's just, it's just devastating. <laughs> the whole thing is devastating. And you're there, you're like, this is not what I expected when I picked up Snagglepuss. <laughs> but in, in a good way, in a good way that makes you think about things. And it's also, again, again, nuanced because Snagglepuss ends up working with Quick Drama Gras later on, who ends up himself being found out anyway. And so has all this regret for he's like, it wasn't even, it wasn't even worth it. I couldn't protect myself anyway. And he ends up working in cartoons, which while Snagglepuss is kind of like, eh, cartoons, TV, it's not real art, because he's a bit of a, he's a bit of a, a snob about that kind of stuff. He ends up there. And then the explanation for why he is orange and called Snaggletooth, like he was when he first appeared in the cartoon, is because he, that's how they're hiding him. They're like hiding him in plain sight and being like, oh, and then, then they say, well, we can bring you out later once it's all kind of blown over. And so that's this meta explanation for the fact that he was orange. It's not the real explanation. I don't know why he was orange <laughs> when he first appeared in the cartoon. They probably changed it because they were like, you know what? He just looks better. He's more appealing looking like Snagglepuss than he did a Snaggletooth. So, uh, one of the nice things about the ending of it as well, when you get the, all of those meta elements where he ends up working on the show too, is that, see here, he brings in if I can make it focus on it, will it focus? It doesn't feel like, it wants to focus on me. Let me move my face out of the way and you'll have a better chance of it happening. He brings Huckleberry Hound's son to the set. And so the idea is that the Huckleberry Hound there is his son. And this is also because he's mentoring him because one of Huckleberry Hound's greatest regrets and fears was that he wouldn't get to be there for his son because he didn't have a father in his life, which again, just sad. Sad times. <laughs> Everything about this was a lot of a lot. So trying to gather everything. There were so many interesting elements. I really also like the discussion that he has when he's on the talk show about the difference between acting and like acting on the theater and acting in film and in television. He makes this distinction between actors and stars and the idea that like a star is someone who you remember forever makes this big lasting impression but it's ultimately a bit vacant where he's like an actor is allowed to have depth and have all these flaws that like a star does is like you can have all these conversations about these things but there, were, there was one exchange when he's talking about it and I really enjoyed it and they use Marilyn Monroe as the focal point for it because Marilyn Monroe is in this and her relationship with Joe DiMaggio and Arthur Miller, the playwright, which is admittedly one of the things I'm not sure came off uh, as well as some of the other elements in it, but it was still very interesting. But yeah, here it is. Here's that line. 
in the end, what makes a character meaningful isn't what's unique about them, but what's common. And I thought that was very good. I feel like there are just lots of good little lines in this that made it really, really interesting. Also, the fact that like Snagglepuss is going to to visit his dad, who who doesn't remember him, and you don't realize that's what's going on until the very end. And just, ugh, why you gotta hurt me like this? Let's see. There's also the, all these interesting exchanges where he's talking with, with the woman who's trying to, to get him and head off this whole culture war. And you see that she really, it's interesting because she herself is in a closeted relationship, but you can also see that she also really believes it and that she's doing a, a good thing. So again, the characters are so, so nuanced. And I really, I really appreciate it. And I thought it was really interesting that like a work like this exists like it, it sounds like a unicorn you wouldn't you know you wouldn't expect to stumble upon something like this and you see the headlines for it because when I had to go I had to gather all of the info and stuff and they're very much just like gay southern playwright and I'm like there was there's so much more to this so much more oh yes here's the the Marilyn panel reveal that Marilyn is in this. One of the elements I wouldn't have minded if they'd spent a bit more time on, maybe less Marilyn and more of this, was the relationship he had with Lila, who wanted to be a part of his life. She has this scene where she breaks down and she goes, I know we don't have a traditional marriage, but I still want to be a part of your life. And I still want to be someone who you can, can confide in. And so he ends up bringing his boyfriend over and trying to integrate their lives together. But ultimately she ends up divorcing him later on to be with one of the members of the play that he was putting on. But one of the things is that when he's lamenting after Huck's uh, suicide is that he, he loves her and he's like, he loves her. And you can see it on his face that he, he genuinely does. But I wish that had been a bit more explored because that's an element that doesn't get a lot of play and some people can still be very confused about their life. What, how, what, no, why? So I wouldn't have minded, but again, this work is exploring so many different things that like, it's fine. You can't, not every work can explore everything. If you enter that place where you're trying to do everything, you either need to have about a million issues, need to be some kind of genius playing 4D chess, or you just need to focus on a couple of things because if you don't, it's just going to crumble and you're not going to be able to address any of them. So I think the things that it chose to tackle, it, it focused on pretty well. You know, what do you think? Tell me, tell me, tell me. Oh, hello. I'm going to say it right. Lobi. I did it. I did it every time. There are some words for me like Kara and Kara. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Thank you very much. You said they did my man Huck so dirty in this book. He really went out tragic. I also like that his son ended up being the Huckleberry Hound from the cartoon. I did too. I thought that that was very sweet because I was not prepared for the the level of level of angst that you were going that you were going to experience. That was also interesting. The contrast between between Huck and Snagglepuss and the ways that they were coping, the ways that they had found to, to deal with it. Look how sad he is here. Just look at him. Sad Snagglepuss. Just the saddest. There we go. Oh, this is a good variant too. Look at that one. This is a good cover too. I think this is the main one. I got this all collected as one, so you know, you know me and floppies. They're just gonna rip right in half. It is not going to happen. The other thing I liked about this was I felt that it got very into the period. Like you, it was very immersive into it. The whole work was very immersive for me. I don't know about all you. I I read it the first time I read it was on one go. I I sat down. I was like, oh, I'll read an issue tonight. The next next thing, just done done and ripping pieces of tissue paper to, to shreds to stick into the book so 
Also, this time I correctly identified Squidly Diddly. Remember there was a video I did where I talked about um, Squidly and it turned out to be Orful and people are like, how dare you not remember the entire canon of the, is that a fly flying by behind me? Yes, it is, okay. It's fine, it's fine. Let me see, where are some of my other tissues of things? Where are my tissues at? There we go. Oh, here's this nice shot of the inside of the stone wall when he brings Huckleberry there for the first time. And he's just so stunned that a place like this exists and is out there in the world. It also really gets into that Cold War element very well, which for some, the like for some in the more modern era, it's hard to get behind that mentality of like what a big, like what a big thing this world constant. What a kind of like how the the pandemic is today. Like just, just a constant something in the background that is just kind of constantly there. And this manages that very well. I'm sorry I'm not as articulate today. It's just there is there's so much to to get to and to go over. And it's just I was honestly, I'll just, I'll just put it out there. I was honestly very taken aback by how thoughtful the, this was. The, I didn't go into it expecting it to be like a boorish mess or anything, but it's just the, the depth and, and compassion and just rawness of it, it did take me aback, it, you know, in, in a good way. I was pleasantly taken, taken aback. Because, you know... And the, the one exchange with Marilyn that I do like, even though I don't feel that she's the most necessary element to this book, is when she has a conversation, oh my God, it just blinded you, with Snagglepuss behind the scenes. And she's talking about how Marilyn is the separate entity from who she really is and how everybody who sees her either wants to worship her or savage her. And nobody knows who she, who she really truly is. And it's a reinforcement for Snagglepuss about the idea that there are true selves and that everybody has one, that everybody has this self that they are keeping away that not really many people ever truly get to see. And that it's a very special thing to be one of those people who gets to see the true person. And I, that was just, it was just a nice sentiment and it was very well contrasted with the way that Snagglepuss then presents himself to the rest of the world. And also that annoyance he feels when people try and do like the whole like wink, wink, nudge, nudge thing with him. See, he fires his lead actor here and then replaces and the replacement ends up with his wife. Should have kept the bad act. No, but... <laughs> Yeah, here is all the, the, ooh, yeah, what was this part? This part was, yeah, the Russell's Paradox, I really, I really enjoyed as well. Yeah, this was, this was, let me see if I can condense it for you. Let me attempt to, con, to oh yeah, Booster Gold and the Flintstones. Let me attempt to, attempt to condense. I can make it happen. I can do it. I can remember and do it all live. Live on camera. There we go. I will read it to you. The Russell Paradox. All right. You ready for the Russell Paradox? This is the reading and reading live. Dramatic live reading. You have a town full of shaved men. By rule, the whole town is divided into two sets. Men who shave themselves and men who get shaved by the town barber. If... But then, which set does the barber belong to? If he shaves himself, he is also getting shaved by the barber. If he goes to the town barber, then he's also shaving himself. He exists in both sets and neither set at the same time. He is the Schrodinger's cat of men getting shaved. So <laughs> I always enjoy when things like that are, are thrown in. I thought this whole Hanna-Barbera initiative was interesting. I have no idea how 
how well it sold or anything. It's one of those things where it's easy to say like, I'd love to see more of this, but I have no idea how many people bought it or if it did well or if it played well. But I will still say I would like more of this, but I do not know what the wide stream appeal was of this in the slightest. <laughs> not at all. The play sequences are integral as well because you see how they play out parts of Huckle like both Huckleberry and Snagglepuss's life together and their friendship. And so you see more of it even than in the flashbacks as you realize that so much of this is being played out within these play sequences. It's very niche, yeah, probably. But I mean, we're all a little niche here. I think we're a pretty, a pretty niche group of people all up in here. The story even makes you feel for quick drama gras, which I feel is a feat given what he does in, in the narratives. The fact that even him, it takes time to even him, it takes time to like give this backstory to like, oh, he came from this long line of of police horses and he feels that he needs to continue on and all of this. Like it's everybody, everybody's a per a person. It's it's very Bojacky in that way. Like you're dealing with all of these, all of these anthropomorphic characters, but they're all so human and have all this depth. Lo yes, it does. Thank you very much. And yes, the paradox does assume that the barber lives in the town. <laughs> Otherwise, if he moves to another town and then the paradox just collapses in on itself. It's like, oh, it's fine. He moved across the town line. They can go and cut their hair wherever they want. <laughs> oh, yeah, this exchange here, too. I like this exchange, this argument that he has with with his boyfriend, Snagglepuss, that is, because I enjoy that it shows that the relationship isn't perfect. And it's not only not perfect because of the external societal pressures, that's part of it, but it's not the only reason. And again, I, I like that. I like the, the layers here. I like the idea here that he feels that Snagglepuss wants all of these things to be separate, that he likes having two separate lives, which is a very interesting aspect to it to explore as well. This worked. This was this was cool. I, it, like the other thing too is that while you get more out of it if you are more familiar with some of the, the events and the people going on in this time period, it's not fully necessary. And it can also act as think as a bit of a a catalyst to potentially want to go and explore some of the real world elements of this uh, a bit more if it's something that you find to be interesting. It um it in no way <laughs> is probably going to drive you to the uh, the cartoons. Nor do I expect it to. Nor do I think that is its its function. This is just one of those interesting. It's very much. It's very in the vein of DC in terms of being very elseworldsy, the playing with these elseworlds reimagined spaces. So I feel that it's it's very on brand for them to do to do something to do something like this. I think Russell really excels here with this this playground to to work with because with Snagglepuss again because his cartoon was so very very basic you have that room of okay what am I going to do here kind of thing. Mr. Another, thank you very much. Sorry I'm late. I love your videos and your channel. Don't worry about being late because I will leave this up for all of the rambling, incoherent mess that it is. But if it had been a video that was scripted, it would be about four hours long. So there is that. <laughs> it's hard to condense things for uh, for the videos to make sure that, you know, they don't go on for your in entire life. The Russia America bits are, are handled well too it doesn't go for your complete cartoonish you know russia bad i'm trying to learn how to do a russian accent by the way like do like dialects and stuff like that i mean i don't do any of them great but still still i will one day for you for me it's really for me <laughs> 
Megazorus, thank you very much. Gritty, edgy, Snagglepuss reboot went. You see, they turn it into a series that just gets all all meta. The series that apparently leads into the original series. <laughs> that would. That, how's the paper quality? Oh, how's the paper quality? Good, very good. That is a very practical question. <laughs> it's a very practical question. It's good. It's nice. It is. Um, it's thick. So, which is very important. It doesn't bleed. Like I can touch it. I can leave things on. It's not coming off everywhere. No, it's it's all it's all good. <laughs> no, the quality is is very excellent. If you keep it keep it safe, keep it away, keep it away from people. It was when I got it, admittedly, because I um I ordered my copy a, a while ago, obviously, because we gotta order all the things. It was sticky. I assume it was in a store and there was a sticker on the front and the person just pulled it off. And but so it was it was sticky. So be mindful that because it's so glossy, it's very easy to get sticky. So you're gonna want some clean hands. I mean, you should always have clean hands, but you'll want some clean hands before handling before handling this one. There we go. So I think I've blathered on for a little bit. What were your favorite? parts what were your favorite parts of this book because I feel like it can speak to so many people in so many different ways and there were so many different things that can be pulled from it because it's very much one of those things where you're su you're supposed to think like it's supposed to leave you with lots of of thoughts and ponderance and it's that kind of and I really appreciate works like that works that leave you to like just kind of sit in your own, sit in your own feelings and mindset and see how you, you know, how you connected with and how you feel about it. Let's see. Let's see. I love you're all this like, yeah, sticky magazine. <laughs> oh yeah. No, sticky is, you know, not nice to be sticky unless it's what you're going for, which is true. I did see a comment so a scroll past while I was uh, blathering on. What um, about about one of you felt that Marilyn was quite integral? So I want to tell me why. Tell me why. Share with the why. Tell me because I like to know things. Tell me why. Oh, Snagglepuss is devastating history. There's something about him going in these scenes where you learn, because every every person you encounter, you learn something new about Snagglepuss and his past, which is really interesting. So you see all of these elements here when he's visiting his father who doesn't remember him, but blames him for, blames his son rather, for his wife's death, for, for leaving. And it's, you see all of the all of this guilt that Snagglepuss carries with him for all these various things, but also how good he is at compartmentalizing so many things by putting them into these plays and the like. Okay, I can I can see that, McReese. Yeah, I, I can I can see it again for me. Like it what, but again, that's what I mean. But we all have different parts that spoke to us more because for me, I was like, I see it and I get it, but it just wasn't the thing that was the most the most compelling for for me at least personally. Dinosaur sprinkles. Yeah, I agree. I think it works really well together. Like the, the whole thing, the whole thing comes to sometimes with a work, it's like what they say about editing, which is something I firmly believe as an editor myself. A good editor is never seen. <laughs> like it's it's something that people might remark on it and stuff, but if it's so if it's so good and it all works, people can't even properly articulate like what it, what it was, you know, but it's like when it doesn't work, it's really easy to be like, that didn't work and that didn't work. And I hated that. And I hated this. So that's why sometimes it can be so difficult to talk about something that you enjoy without seriously sitting down and trying to, you know, 
because sometimes if something you, you just you have to fight that urge to be like, oh, it just works. It works because it works, you know. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, nice. Yeah. Steven, you were reading it as it came out. I think that would have been interesting. I read so few things as they come out, but I always like to make the point that it is a different experience when you're reading it, when it comes out versus all at once, because all at once you can just consume it in, in a whole, but when you have to wait, you have that anticipation and kind of sometimes that fan theoriness or the, it can surprise you in in the turns it takes like it can still surprise you when you're reading it all at once but it's much more short-lived that's for sure it's very much more of you know like you can turn the, the very next page and find out you don't have that anticipation you know and again I like works that elicit a tactful discussion. I mean, not every, you know, people are going to discuss things how they want to discuss them, but it, the way that it's presented encourages that kind of, you know, thoughtful type of discussion, which is something that I very much uh, appreciate. Let's see. Tamil. Yeah, that was, that was a good moment. The moment when it's, you know, I'm not sure if this is the one you're speaking about specifically, but the moment at the end when it's revealed at the, the trial here. Yeah. I think I have it right. Yeah. I have that moment right here where they're there and they're trying to get him to come down on Huckleberry Hound. And he says, there's no point because he's dead. And you do see all this regret on her face of like, that's, that's not what she wanted. Like this, that's not what she wanted at all. But it's this idea that these, these things that they have, you know, that they have consequences and it's, it's a very good, it is a very good moment. And it's all, as you see, intercut with these pieces of the play with the characters who are playing Snagglepuss and Huckleberry Hound. And it's just, it's so well interwoven. It, it really is. I'm definitely not doing it, you know, the the justice for the depth that it provided. But I was very happy to even be able to let people know that it existed. Because, again, like someone mentioned earlier, I do think that it is pretty niche. And so it's very easy to, to miss a lot of things, especially when so much is coming out. So I hope at the very least that if you read it, you, you got something out of it or like, I liked it or, you know, Lance Rutt. Thank you very much. Did you like any of the other Hanna-Barbera books? Yeah. Yeah, I did. I liked, um, I liked the Flintstones. I like Scooby-Doo Apocalypse. I know some people think it's kind of extra, but I did like it. I liked most of them. The Jetsons, the Jetsons was also a, a fun one for, for me. Yes, catching up. There we go. Now I'm trying to see if there is anything, because I'm skipping around it too. I'm skipping around it, which also is a bit, because this is a story that builds on itself. As you go on and you learn more and more and more about the characters, and you can feel as it's going that it's building to something, and then it's not building to something that's going to be necessarily happy. And that's something that, so you kind of get this sense of dread as you see the sadness in the characters, you know, faces and beings just kind of growing and growing. And you know, you know, it's not going to be good, but you're not entirely sure. It, the Huckleberry Hound is a bit of a, not necessarily a surprise, but a bit of one because you're expecting the big thing to be Snagglepuss and him being blacklisted. It's kind of what, you would expect to be the largest focal point, but then when it turns out to be what happens with Huckleberry Hound, it's just sad, sad times, sad times, raise my heart. <sighs> Jen's Entertainment, thank you. 
The Origins, Mark's a friend, met at a con my booth. I draw an indie comic, Lunaria. It was next to him. Mike Feehan rhymes with Lan. Drew my tat of S. Oh, you have a you have a tattoo of Snagglepuss? That's really cool. Oh, that's neat. I've always wanted to get one, but um, every time I'm almost at the point of going to get it, something happens and I can't get it. So I think I shall remain tattooless. <laughs> I'll probably be tattoo list because it never it never lines up. It never lines up with the timing. Mm. Let's see. I'm look I'm looking at see part of it is I'm looking at all of you like talking to each other and like, yes, this is what I wanted. <laughs> I'm glad it's working out. Cause it's um one of the things is, you know, with a book club when you're actually all there, then you can, you can talk verbally. So I'm really glad to see it. Like, yes, the people are talking. <laughs> it's good. Cause like I said, when I started it, like one of the things about comics is sometimes you don't have people to talk to. So I'm like, yes, look at the people. <laughs> Lobi, uh, thank you. What do you think was the significance of the couple that, of the, of, I can't talk at all. The couple that attended the execution, I guess they represent the fanatical American public. I felt like that spoke to the all, the all of the there's a lot of the idea of spectacle is is a big part of this and again it ties to the beginning where he talks about people are viewing these really serious things as entertainment and so you can kind of see that parallel well they're not just watching plays and the like they're also watching executions and i feel like that had something to do with it christopher allen thank you i joined the chat to find out about this book and this was so interesting that I bought it. Yes. <laughs> 80s freeze frame. <laughs> 80s freeze frame holding snaggle puts. I don't know why I'm saying yes. Like I'm not spun or anything. I'm just really excited when people want to read a comic. <laughs> like, yeah, reading. Take a look. It's in a book, The Reading Rainbow. <laughs> Yay. Oh, and I opened the page right to his nice speech that he's giving about art. I will share some of it. I will share some of it with you. I will share some. Share some. All right. You ready to hear some depth? The purpose of art is subversion. Art is telling the world how it's killing you, how its institutions have failed you. In the end, any culture worth a damn is made by subversives because art is what tells the world it needs to change. I like it. I like it. You don't necessarily have to agree with it, but it's like, it's it's something to build a discussion upon. And I am very appreciative of works that you can talk about. And I kind of wish this one was more well-known because I feel like there could be a lot of really good discussions with people who can be more articulate live than me. So, you know, what are you going to do about it? <laughs> yes, the people are talking about the, um, the continuation or sequel in the in the chat. So yes, if you could not get enough of the um the realistic sad universe, then you can you can keep you can keep on going with it. I almost wish now that I'm doing it live that I had done a dedicated video to it. Maybe I still will at at some point. I don't know. I have no idea because I never know what I'm doing next. But again, it could you could do like a series of things. You could study this academically if you felt so inclined because there are so many things that you could pull out of it. This could go on some kind of reading list somewhere. <laughs> it can be up there with Persepolis and Maus and the other things they make you read. Fad 23, thank you very much. You, you're like, you need to see my answer about Marilyn. Marilyn represents the destructive elements of celebrity. Her interaction with SP, her interactions with SP are really telling. Well, Marilyn is ultimately, she's a well, she's a key figure in this period. She is destroyed by by fame. So there is that element to it ultimately. And the persona, you know, that she's in is very much a, a I guess I don't know. Maybe it's because I I love Marilyn Monroe. There was a whole phase where I read like every biography and like every everything there was Marilyn under under the sun so 
maybe, I don't know, maybe because I'm already familiar with her, I wanted to explore those other elements more. Lord knows. Again, we all come from different subject positionings and different perspectives and it impacts how things hit us. So I'm throwing it around now. You see, this is why I can't have floppies because I'm just a haphazard with the things that I'm holding when I speak. Let's see. Hey, Stark Roads, yeah. <laughs> Get them while they're in print because you never know. Some, sometimes I go for a comic that I assume will be in print and I'm like, here we go. And it's like, nobody has to pay $300. Do not pass go. And I'm like, whoa, this only came out like three years ago. <laughs> so I'm glad that this one is, is still around and still able to be to be picked up and the like. <laughs> yes, of course I have coffee and a, and a drink today. Every time, every, every single time I do. Let's see. Catching up, catching up, catching up with the chat. Oh, I remember last time I told you that there would be stream labs. There kind of is. I set it up a little bit, but I want to test it. I need to do a tester. I can never just, I'm not one of those people who can just go live without having seen the setup first. Like I'm terrified. Like maybe it looks good to me. It looks terrible to everybody else. I don't know. I can't live in that world. I can't live like that. Not live like that. I'm too concise. So I'm like, yes, I feel like we have vaguely touched upon all the things that I look I'm like 51 minutes you could talk about this book for hours why am I this person why am I like this <laughs> what has happened so I guess I will throw it back to you what was your favorite part of this like if you liked it firstly I guess that's the first question did you like it did you not like it when I was when I pitched it that it that it had won one of the comments I got from somebody was that they had actually read it for one of their book clubs and that it was something that was universally liked and that was nice to hear, but I was also surprised. So I wanted to know, like, do what? What do you? What do you think? Like, did you like it? Did you not like it? And if you did like it, what was your favorite part? What was your least favorite part? Tell me. Tell me. <laughs> I wish I could have those pop ups, and I could put my Loki tell me pop up, which is always what I'm thinking of when I say that. And I'm like, tell me. <laughs> I like it, but it was more depressing than I thought it would be. <laughs> yeah, I guess I did see that. Like some people were like, this did not go to the places that I was expecting. And while I can see that, I always have that. What else would it have been? What I can't imagine the alternate universe, what the Snagglepuss comic would have been. You know, I, I feel like this is such a perfect exploration for this character given given his history and all of the all of the coding swirling around it it's just it's very it has a lot of it has a lot of empathy it it has a lot of empathy for its for its characters and that's that's just really nice to see i can't I can't get over it. I feel like I've just gone 53 minutes being like, it's good. Read it. <laughs> Let's see. And again, I'm not always one for meta elements, but I enjoyed the meta elements in this, tying it into the to the shows and and the like it was you know again this is one of those ones that i go back to and reread i there are some comics if the comic is here there are a couple of reasons why a comic is here obviously number one because i like it and i i'm going to reread it. i read all of the comics that I have, which is why the collection isn't crazily massive because it would be one of those things where if I just collected everything I wanted, I wouldn't have time to read all of it. And then I would, I would feel bad just looking in a, a room of like, if you collect them and the, the thing you're enjoying is the collecting, I totally get that because I also enjoy collecting, but 
if the reading is the thing, then I would feel bad looking into a room of comics that I that I haven't read. I'd be like, somebody else could be reading this. Maybe somebody really wanted to read it. And now they're looking online and they can't get it. So that's one of the reasons I have them because I'm going to reread them. And this is definitely one. And also it's ex an accessible reread because it's not the longest. So it is the kind of thing. And also because of all the layers to it where you could reread it in very quick succession and then get even different things out of it, even reading it from one day to the next, depending upon your mindset or where you want to focus on. So I really enjoyed that set, like element of it. Also back there are some books that I do not like, but I hold on to just to see what's, if my opinion changes and lots of, most of the times it doesn't, but there's been some rare instances where it has and actually happened very recently with one of them where I read it again. I was like, I don't hate this anymore. <laughs> I don't hate it anymore. <sighs> I agree. Like I, like that I do that it is impressive how much it gets in here, Like this is six issues, but it feels dense in the best of ways. And again, like I was saying earlier, nearer to the start of this, part of what makes that so impressive is the fact that when you give the synopsis to people, it doesn't sound like the kind of thing where a lot of stuff would be happening. It sounds like it could be a very shallow slice of life, but it's not. There is a lot in here. And it, it's one of those things that proves that you can do a lot. You can pack so much into even a single issue. You can make a single issue feel like an entire story or it can feel incredibly vapid and something that it takes you three minutes to read. It just really depends how, like what you're trying to do with it and how much attention and energy you're going to place into it. Like, this has so much love and attention and energy placed into it. And I'm not sure if every person who got the, the mission of like, Hey, you want to write Snagglepuss? I don't think everybody would have gone to town the way that this does, you know? Have you changed your mind on Mr. Fantastic? <laughs> it's not about Reed. Not everything's about Reed. Which one? I'm nosy. Oh, Dinosaur. It was the um, Return of Bruce Wayne. Return of Bruce Wayne knows what it did. I still don't love it, but I don't hate it anymore. <laughs> so <laughs> it knows what it did. <sighs> oh, I didn't talk about the art or the color, the coloring in this yet. That's something else I can talk about. Proper review things. I love the colors in this. The The colors are so bright and they pop so much. And the way that they're used more more muted in certain in certain areas, brighter in other. Like, coloring is one of those things where it can really make or break, but it doesn't get a lot of focus all the time. And I thought it was very good here. So... William Francis Colette, welcome to the fanboy stud level. Welcome. You are a fanboy stud. For those who are newer here, that's a thing from way back when this channel started. And it has to do with the fan who sent in the idea for the black uh, Spider-Man costume. And what, one of the things he wanted was to have had some credit and potentially be called a fanboy stud. So I thought it was a very nice, a nice thing to put for the, for the level. For we are all fanboy studs here today. <laughs> People loving comics and chatting about them. I love talking about comics. Even when I'm not as, as graceful as could be. I would be more graceful if I'd scripted it. At some point, maybe. I feel like you could hear that drinking and that made me cringe a little bit because we're entering into ASMR territory. Not yet. <laughs> we can't, that's another channel. <laughs> ASMR comic reading demonetized instantly. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I can't read that. Not because I don't want to, because I'm some kind of prude, but because YouTube might yell at me, but thank you very much for the, Hey, you, <laughs> I see you. And I, I appreciate you. <laughs> Let's see. 
I think Jensen said something that the origins of this were were very interesting. I'm not gonna lie, I haven't looked too much into the origins of it. I was more interested in the connections between like Snagglepuss and all of the meta elements and the like. Had I been doing a scripted video, I probably would have looked more into the origins, but mostly I was like, I need to find time to reread this. Oh my word. It's, I announced this over a month ago, over, over a month ago. And then I only found time to reread it this week. Everything happened. I'm sure everybody can relate to that in some capacity, but this everything happened. Like the whole world was like, oh, so you would like to sit down and read something and then just everything. <laughs> ah. It was, so I was so happy. It was getting down to the wire and I was like, oh my God, I need to reread it and take notes because I will not be that person who goes in and hasn't read it. Just no. <laughs> Mechazorus, thank you very much. Do you have a schedule for live streams? No, I, um, I post, okay, community tab. Community tab is where I post updates for all the things that I am doing. And I just, I pick a day and then, you know, say a prayer, like, please let this day work out. I put it like long in advance. I plan, like I plan babysitting for the kids and just everything. But it was so down to the wire. I was making the thumbnail for this five minutes before I came up here to go live. Just everything. I was like, I made it. I'm so, so happy. Snaggle boy. <laughs> That's the thing. Like, I'm so happy to talk about all of the sadness that happened in Snagglepuss. I made it. <laughs> oh. Oh, here's the nice panel of when he brings his boyfriend over and they all have dinner together. I wish it would focus. It doesn't feel like focusing tonight. It's because my hair is so pink. It's like, look at the, the, the pinkness. That's all I want to look at. <laughs> <clears throat> There we go. Also in general, not just in this comic, I'm a fan of the an anthropomorphization. Sometimes it lets you get away with things that you couldn't get away with with human characters. You can you can push things because while there's that familiarity, there's also that distance and it allows you a, a space to play that I've always really, really appreciated. Hmm. Yeah, it's 2 p.m. where I am too. I have no idea why I said tonight. I'm all over the place. I'm very, very tired. <laughs> that that question just popped out to me. Do you do you associate certain songs with certain comics? Yes, I do. I do all the time. All of certain songs with certain characters, certain comics all the time, which is why I don't need your lyrics in my comic, Tom King. I already got my own. <laughs> I've already got my own. Mm. Mm. I know I'm just looking at it, but I'm just going, I'm just going through it, trying to see if there's anything else that I really want to highlight because I know what's going to happen. I'm going to pop off the stream once it's once it's done and then everything's gonna flood back into the brain it's just like when somebody i don't know if this happens to any of you but it's like if somebody asks me oh like what's your favorite comic what's your favorite movie what's your favorite what's your favorite anything i instantly forget everything in existence i'm like movies exist what are they comics i i read the just everything just blanks instantly out of my head it's just i don't know it's like too much pressure <laughs> to name a favorite thing. I'm like, that's too much. I, can I can't. <laughs> yeah, I know. Finding out the judge was his father, McReese, was a great moment. But also you did have that kind of like, this is some Disney mating logic over here. <laughs> but it was... The other thing that was devastating about that was that he was still seeking out that relationship and they kind of, where's the last encounter? I think the last encounter here is here. Mm. Yeah, the last encounter here where he's talking to his father who doesn't remember him and he's saying that he does regret losing him and like not, and not talking to him anymore. And that all of the things 
he thought were important weren't. And he just wishes that he still had a, a son to talk to and that he wants to tell him that, you know, that he was, that he was wrong. And, you know, but now they can't, now they're in this position where it's just not possible. And it's just mm, the heart, the heart. Isaac Cobb, thank you very much. What did you think of Team Titans Academy? I'm not read it yet. Cause I was doing things like rereading every issue of Batgirl, <laughs> you know, Infinite Frontier, and I, I was and am low-key excited, and like all these new comics are coming out. I'm like, but what about also rereading all these comics from 2009 and also <laughs> Hanna-Barbera Beyond? <laughs> this is why I'll never be up there with the big boys. <laughs> Actually, I will. That's not so. I'll get there. We're going to get there, and we're going to get there doing our own thing. We don't need to follow no trends except when we feel like it. We're going to get there. Reach and aim for the stars in a ridiculous cat shirt. <laughs> Let's see. This book seems too smart. Well, don't say that. Just want superheroes. <laughs> oh, I'm glad. No, the Batgirl video was a lot of fun. I enjoyed doing the Batgirl video. It was, what am I working on now? I'm actually working on it so I can say it because it's been, it's midway through. So it's going to happen. Um, is, as, as she just blanks entirely. Bleh. This is what happens when you have four hours of sleep. Um, the Peacemaker. We're doing Peacemaker things because I was already low-key scripting that. So I'm going to finish it because it's actually really interesting. It's interesting. It means I tangentially get to talk about the Watchmen as well, which is always a fun thing that I enjoy doing. <laughs> so that one's fun. It was one of those ones that I thought was going to be shorter, but it looks like it's going to be longer in a in a good way. I do like I do like doing the longer form ones. They just take they just take so much time. So, and then YouTube updated their tax things for uh, foreign YouTubers, and so I have to like get on that. And I was like. I can do it. And then they were like, you have to send it via snail mail post. We don't have. And I was like, oh my God, I have to use the postal system. No. <laughs> so that was a whole other stress. And then it was like, we don't care if any of your stuff expired because of COVID and you couldn't go. We don't care. It needs to be up to date. And I was like, oh my God. So I have to do some bureaucratic red tape ninjiness to send in this form. Third person infamous. Thank you very much. Redundant. Thank you very much. I can't wait to watch your Stephanie Brown back row video. She's one of my favorites. I, I love Steph. And I didn't even get to talk about her slapping Batman. Maybe I'll do that if I do a video on like her dying and coming back to life. At some point. At some point. <laughs> now, taxes are never fun. It's also just regular tax time. So it's like adulting. Regular taxes. Plus filling in this form and sending it snail mail to, I think, like, Arizona. And I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> oh, like, I'm not going to be a priority. Like, here, take this letter from Canada and <laughs> get it. <laughs> get it there. I feel like I'm sending it by horse or, like, carrier pigeon. You're like, here, put it on horseback and ride it across the border. <laughs> I just, I couldn't believe that there wasn't an online option. I was like, there's no, I can't. I can't just submit this info. Why? Why is there no online option? <laughs> Spencer Welch. A good anthropomorphic series is Reed Waller's Omaha the Cat Dancer, an adult series. And he has a new series coming out soon. Thank you very much for the rec. I will check that out. Omaha. I'll write that down because I'm not going to remember. I'm not going to remember it otherwise. I had my notes here and I didn't look at them once because I remembered it. Like a champ, a discombobulated champ. Omaha the cat dancer. I will look that up later. Uh, Mechazorus. Thank you very much. I just wanted to say that the new Batman slash Superman is really dope. Very strange and cool and interesting. I did buy that and I skimmed it. I haven't fully read it. I looked at how all the panels were laid out and like all the dialogue and I was like, this needs time that I do not have right now. I will be back. I will be back for this later. <laughs> Anthony Broderick. Thank you very much. Sasha, you comic genius. I hope I can meet you at Comic Con one day. So you can sign my physical copy of Snagglepuss along with a Lois Marriage comic. Well, thank you very much. But I think you should get Mark Russell to, to sign your copy of Snagglepuss. I I should not be signing. I should sign a blank piece of paper. 
So it can be a conversation piece. There's like a, why do you have a blank piece of paper with someone's name on it? Because reasons. <laughs> I don't even know if Comic Cons are gonna come back the way they the way they were, or what capacity that's gonna look like in the future. <laughs> I can't I can't talk to people at cons, even people I want to. You have no idea what like a cringe human I am in face to face encounters. <laughs> oh. Horse might be fast from the U.S. Postal Service. Same with the Canadian Postal Service. So imagine them combined. Combine some horrible Franken, like a snail. A snail carrying your letter. So what's going to happen is, because I have no problem complying with changes that people, you know, make. Like, you know, we have um, we have a tax treaty with uh, with the states. So it's going to cancel it itself out at the end of the day. But I need to fill out the forms to, like, prove that we have the treaty and everything. It's fine. I just wish that YouTube had given a bit more notice because of how long it takes to get the form processed. So that means that in the interim before it's processed, all the maximum amount of taxes will be taken out rather than the amount that should be. And I don't know if you're going to get it back or not. It's just a whole bunch of like bureaucratic, not fun behind the scenes. Like people say like YouTube's not a real job. I'm like lies and slander, lies and slander, anything where you have to like fill out like this is the w7 and this is anything where you're getting into that territory that's a job that's a job <laughs> you know <laughs> oh mm. i actually drank all my coffee today what universe is this i have to bring on my second drink probably some of you don't know if you haven't been here from the early times, but I have two drinks at all times when I stream because of the, the intense fear that my mouth will dry out. So I have two drinks constantly. <laughs> What's in the mug, coffee? Dylan, eight. If you could write a comic or movie, what would it, what would it be? I need a full storyline, plot, genre, main character. P.S. I love your videos. Bye. <laughs> Thank you very much. And... I, I am the, the unicorn of comic book creators who has not ever thought about making one. I I write like novelly type things or like ideas for them and stuff like that. But comics, comics, no, there's something that I love, but would not think to, to do myself, if that makes any sense. <laughs> oh yeah, McReese, you've been here since bagged milk. He got my milk in a bag. Remember there was a stream where I brought the bagged milk on the stream and showed the people the bag because they didn't believe that it was bagged? I'm not doing that today because I'm way too far away from my fridge, but my milk is bagged. <laughs> it's in a bag. <laughs> oh. I saw a comment uh, scroll past talking about like the uh, how the closet was treated in this, and I thought it was handled very well and very period uh, appropriate. And like, there's not a... What I like most about this, if we take it back to Snagglepost, which is what the stream is about, um, is that it's, this could have been a very judgmental, you know, unnuanced sledgehammer to the head kind of work, and it's not. And that's something I enjoy about it. It gives you the space to breathe and make the judgments that you want to and feel how you want. And I appreciate works that feel that you're smart and a mature, intelligent person and feel that you are capable of coming to a conclusion, which is something that I enjoy. And this does that. So thank you very much, Mark Russell Snagglepuss. <laughs> so. <laughs> Jamal Taylor, thank you very much. What's the worst origin story you've ever read? The worst? Ah, uh, I don't know, because it's like worst or like fun. Because I mean, Elongated man got his powers from soda. And it's like, that's not great, but it brings me much joy. So <laughs> Isaac Koff, thank you very much. I'm short now because I'm not sitting on my knees anymore. I read the Titans 2016 to 2019 flash forward, flash forwards run and the Barry Returns arc from the 1993 run. Thanks to this channel reminding me of my love for Wally West. Yay. I'm glad that you remembered your love for what I'm Every time someone says, like, I'm reading a comic, like I said earlier, it makes me really, really just explode with happy because I, too, just randomly read comics at times. Omar Santana, do you have a rap song for a comic character, like one that I associate with them? 
Yes, but of course now because you asked, I can't remember anything. Songs, I listen to them. Muzak, what is that? So, <laughs> oh, I've, I said it earlier, right? Thank you, and I'm just gonna read it because I just can't function today as a human. Have you read, seen the new Milestone comic stuff? I haven't read it. I've seen it, but I haven't, I haven't read it yet. I wanted to reread my old Static stuff before I dove into the new stuff. I always liked Static and. I liked the show and then I got into the static comic. So static is definitely the character I'm most familiar with from that. So I want to reread all that and then get my static static on. <clears throat> there we go. It's fun. I'm uh I'm I think this is I think this is working. Like, you know, like touch, knock wood. I think, I think this is a good idea and I think it's working. And even if I'm not always the most cohesive or coherent host, I'm really happy to see y'all talking about it and, and enjoying it. And I think that's good. So this is a segment that I definitely want to, I want to continue on with. I was a bit nervous about, about doing it at first. I didn't know how it was going to go off, but I think, I think, yeah, I think this is, I think this can be a thing as the, as the kids say, and I'm very happy. I got to wear my pink, my pink wig for Snagglepuss. I have so many deep feelings about Snagglepuss now <laughs> after this comic. Whereas when I, like, when I was growing up, it was all reruns of the Hanna-Barbera stuff. And I don't remember seeing a lot of Snagglepuss. I saw some later on because they would collect them in DVD collections and the like. But for me growing up, what they played the most was uh, the Flintstones. The Flintstones and Scooby-Doo, they played those all the time. So I have really strong, firm memories of the Flintstones, especially. And I actually own all of the classic Scooby-Doo because I'm that person. But so Snagglepuss was a bit more blank for me. And now I feel like deeply connected to Snagglepuss. <laughs> I'm like, yes, Snagglepuss. The world needs more Snagglepuss. And it was so, it was so wonderfully in tone too with how he was, the personality, like the, the, the building blocks of the personality he was given in the cartoons. Because let's not pretend he was like that deep, you know, there. <laughs> no, Snagglepuss for a tiny bit of time had, was like a, came forward too because there have been multiple snagglepusses like no there's only been one snag but there's been multiple snagglepuss runs so there has been did you know there was a snagglepuss kellogg's lawsuit thing because you know of course i'm like lawsuit i'm here for that so snagglepuss was endorsing a kellogg's cereal but the voice that they gave him was reminiscent of um an actor the actor who played the cowardly lion and so he came forward and was like, I don't want to be associated with this because I don't want people thinking that I support Kellogg's or I'm endorsing it. So because of that, they had to put a little credit on the commercial saying that it was the, the voice actor. So he became one of like the first like openly credited voice actors like that on a commercial because of this lawsuit. It was so fascinating. Thank you, Bert Lahr. Thank you. There you go. Y'all got my back. <laughs> so... Oh, and thank you, Third Person's Anonymous. It's just, it was just so fascinating. I just, I love the idea that you have to call, but I can understand it too, because it sounds kind of petty, like, oh, who cares? It's just cereal. But like, no, I get it. Like if you didn't endorse that and people are walking up to you, like, I hear that you love the cornflakes. You're like, what? No. <laughs> so I get it. But it's one of those things that it sounds funny to, to reiterate it to people. Spider Guy Alex, thank you very much. I have Invincible Volume 1 on the way. I've never read it before and I can't wait. I like Invincible. I don't think my, my first compendium's down there. The other ones are off. You can't see them. But my first compendium is down there. I haven't seen any of the episodes of the adaptation yet, but I'm going to. I hope that it looks like they're going to hold the reveal to their chest for a bit, which is exciting to me. And maybe they can tighten some of the stuff because I like Invincible, but it also has some serious flaws in terms of pacing and the cohesiveness of certain plots. So hopefully maybe they, they can tighten it and improve it. A thing that I might, this is a huge might. Also, Dawes Butler is amazing. But um, this is a huge might. Resident Alien is a comic series that I've been reading. I'm waiting for the last issue so that I can decide whether I'm going to do a You're Sleeping on it or not. There is a TV series that came out on um, sci-fi that I always want to call Siffy because they changed the spelling of it. And it does not look like sci-fi, but I'll play your game, Sci-Fi Network. And they have a series that came out with Alan Tudyk. And it 
is so totally different that I kind of want to do a comparison between the two. Like I, I kind of, I kind of want to do a little bit of a kind of want to, you know, maybe, maybe it's a thing I'll do. I also might do it because I've done the video where I've talked about how I feel that comics can stand independent of adaptations, which I truly do. And I feel that adaptations get too much focus. And I also believe that, but some people have taken that to me. Like I hate adaptations and I don't, and I don't want to, that to be like the lore of the channel. Like she hates them. Someone actually said that I never watched them. I was like, what? That's not true. There's a, there's a canon expand. It's like going to be like the Kellogg's like, we have to come out and be like, no, I never said Mr. Another. Thank you very much. Are you watching Superman and Lois series? Who would you like to see Lois marry? Many. <laughs> I am watching it. I'm behind, but I have, I have, I have watched it. I've watched some every Superman show I watch. It doesn't matter what it is. Superboy, original Superman, Smallville, Lois and Clark. Now Superman and Lois. I just, I'm, I'm there. I'm there. I'm, I'm a simp for Superman. I guess. Who would you like to see Lois marry from any universe? I actually do like Lois and Clark together, despite like how hilarious they were in the Silver Age. <laughs> <laughs> um, but what? okay, I'm one of those weird people who like loves the alternate universes where she's like they're both evil and she's married to Lex. So you know that's me. A super sim, <laughs> simper woman. <laughs> oh, at least we can still say that word here, unlike on Twitch. <laughs> so I'm too scared to go on Twitch. Twitch is another world for me. I'm like, I don't even half understand what's happening here half the time. <laughs> oh. Let's see. Actually, one of the interesting things about this is that though the blacklisting is present in this book, it doesn't pull focus, which is something I will admit when I went into it that I was kind of expecting it to pull focus a little bit and it doesn't. And that becomes, that's very fascinating because the idea of being blacklisted is indeed, you know, is indeed terrifying. So Snagglepuss is very brave at the end there when he's just like, forget it. I don't even care anymore. There we go. Lois marries Mr. Fantastic. Ah, <laughs> uh, one day, one day, Mr. Fantastic videos and and the like. It's very much just a what do I feel like doing at the moment kind of deal on this channel. It is influenced sometimes by what's going on, but that's just because, like, hey, yeah, the Peacemaker exists and his six issue miniseries and that hilarious '80s series and the really interesting psychological background they gave him in that. Lance Rutt, thank you very much. Have you read any of the Scooby-Doo team-ups? Yes, I have. I Scooby-Doo, I love Scooby-Doo. <laughs> I have a childlike, wondrous enjoyment of Scooby-Doo. I Anything Scooby, I love Scooby-Doo. I don't even care. The movies, Scoob, all, if it's an adaptation of Scooby-Doo, I don't know. There's something about like friends together solving mysteries in a van down by the river that, <laughs> with their dog. And I'm like, yeah, Scooby. And Every episode is the same. And I'm still like, yeah, Scooby-Doo. <laughs> They're even doing that Velma series. And I'm like, Velma? I Velma is my go-to Halloween costume, by the way. It's like, you need to do the Halloween costume stat. And I'm like, Velma. I got a Velma wig. I got a Velma sweater. Got a Velma skirt. My glasses, no matter what the year or normally Velma-esque, we're doing it. Velma. The only thing is that my husband won't go with Shaggy with me. <laughs> it's so sad. <laughs> oh spider guy alex thank you very much did you watch wandavision i did like i said i watch all the things i just don't talk about them. <laughs> i just don't talk about them but yeah i watch all the things Velma, but I can, I can buy Velma by herself because they do Shaggy and Scooby by themselves. And to me, that's the harder sell. So I don't know. Cause I've watched all those Shaggy and Scoob by themselves series. I'm kind of like, mm, I feel like you need the rest of the, the rest of the people. <clears throat> there we go. Let's catch up. So I guess for the people who hadn't read it and this was uh, new to them, Snagglepuss. 
are you glad you read it? Like, are you glad that it's it's something that is in that you know is now in your brain that lives there? Is it something that you can see yourself reading again? Are you a person that rereads or even rewatches stuff? I know some people like one and done, but so yeah, tell me, tell me, tell me all the things I I want to know. I'm a I'm a, like I said I'm a big rereader and also a, a rewatcher. I feel like the you can get such a different thing, even just because you're in a different place in your life, you know, out of a, out of a work. <clears throat> like I, I love getting uh, recommendations and also I like reading things that I think that I might not potentially like, like sometimes there's a write up and like, it might even make me a little prickly and it says like, mm, I don't know if I'm going to like this, but I like to go into it anyway, because you never know. It's like sometimes the write-up doesn't do it justice or the way it's handled is really good or it's something that really surprises you. And I like I like that surprise. And I don't like cutting myself off from things that I might potentially enjoy. And if I hate it, I hate it. You know, it's like, it, it is what it is, you know? <clears throat> also, I do that thing where if I like something, I'll check out every version. Like if it's a book, it's like, oh, and there's an audio book, I listen to it. Oh, and there's a comic, I read it. Oh, and there's a movie, I watch it. Like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> there's coffee dregs and I can get to them for I'm a coffee fiend I live on coffee oh. my um my daughter is turning four next next month so hopefully I can start getting more more sleep as they both age into the future. I'm looking forward to because once this is something that is a definite, so I can say it. Once both of them are like on an even keel, I will live stream more because I'll have more time. And I really do enjoy the the live streams. They're one of my favorite things, just chit chatting about comics. It's great. And I get to see what all of you think. And I recognize names from the comments and stuff. And it's really cool. It's really cool. The purple lord Leo and Nancy. Ah, the spider trickster god. Thank you very much. One of these days, I'm going to predict the hair color. Until then, I will continue to be schooled on all things comics. <laughs> I have a wig problem. So what I'm going to, um, one of the things I'm going to do for uh, my members, I already told them. So because there are special behind the scenes things for members that includes the voting for the books that we do on these book club things. But also, I'm going to show them all the embarrassing reject wigs. The uh, the wigs that you will probably never see in a mainstream video because not every wig is a winner. Sometimes you you look at it, and especially now, because before you could you know you could go out to the store and try it on, and like oh this looks good. Now you got to guess, and sometimes oh sometimes the color that they put on the screen is not what it actually is in real life, or sometimes that cut's so cute but not on you. And I have. Oh, oh, there are some disasters. <laughs> I think my favorite is one that I will call the lowest. And I put it on and my husband burst out laughing. It was, <laughs> it was so, <laughs> oh my gosh, it was so bad. <laughs> there are. There is some disasters, some disasters in there. Like most of them, I've been very fortunate. I found a great place and they're really easy to lay down. They have lots of styles. They have natural hairlines and they look good. But sometimes you still, you know, it's not that they look bad. It's that they look bad on me. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, thank you again, Wig of the Month Club. <laughs> we all get together and pick a wig. It's funny. I got a question the other day about do I have any videos of my natural hair? And it's tons, tons. And uh, I still I still do do them. It's just I haven't been able to get to my hairdresser in forever because everything's still locked down where I am. <laughs> mm. It's just difficult, difficult. So for those who are re- who are re-watching this later on, if you're watching the stream and you feel like anything, they're like, you missed the most important. How dare you? Put, put in the comments. I want to hear. I want, because again, like this, this Snaggle Puss world is not, is not done for me. Like I'm going to reread this. I love seeing all the different perspectives and what people got out of it. 
maybe Lord knows, like down the line at some point, like maybe I'll get a, a dedicated video. Who knows? I don't know. I don't even know what I'm going to do half the time tomorrow. But <laughs> oh. Yes, you can view the chat during rewatches. I have that enabled. You know, that's actually something you can turn off. I don't know why people turn that off. It's because there's a check mark you have to check to be like enable the live chat to be shown afterwards. And I'm like, well, the live chat is some of the most fun. So that even if you miss the stream, you can read the chat and see what people were saying. That's that's part of the that's part of the fun times. I don't know why people turn that off. And it's interesting, you know? And also because then if you miss something, even yourself, you can go back in the in the stream and find it at some point if you're the type of person who has time for that kind of thing. <laughs> oh. Maybe, or maybe they turn it off because they want more interaction in the comments. And if you're watching it and reading the chat, you might not engage in that way. There are lots of YouTube games that can be played, you know, and no, sh I have got no shame for anybody's game, you know, <laughs> get, get your hustle, get your YouTube on, do your thing, you know, make it, make it work for you. Whatever makes YouTube work for you, go, you know, do it. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, I know the algorithm. The algorithm's the worst. It's like, it's the best, but also the worst. And sometimes it's just broken. My favorite thing is when I open my phone, you can tell just by looking at it that it's broken. You're like, oh, today it is broken. I'm posting anyway. I don't even care. <laughs> Isaac Koff, thank you very much. Have you ever thought about doing a video of Wally and Dick's friendship throughout the years? I have thought about friendship videos a lot, like just relationships between characters. I think about it all the time. I'm like, I should just make a video, but I think about so many things. Okay, if, if it was possible, I had the Hermione time turner of life, I would post like three videos a day, but they would all be, you know, like the, the editing and the stuff that, that I do for my videos. So obviously it's not possible because I have so many ideas all the time. There is just so many things that I want, you know, there are actually videos that are in the back end that have never gone live. And now I don't know if they can because it's weird because like they're obviously so old because the set's different or like I'm pregnant or I have a bunch of scripts that I've written but never filmed. And now I look at them like, will I ever film this? I don't know. It's like there's a whole bunch of stuff that's just there because I'm just constantly everywhere with with all the things. Just so many things happening all of all of the time. <clears throat> Have you thought of making more off the cuff, less edited videos? Um, yes, but I mean, as an editor, I don't know. I can't not edit things. It's a problem. <laughs> there was, um, when I was, when I was working and we had to do, um, some gaming footage, I remember it was, um, my boss was like, just, just export and upload it. Don't even watch it back. And I literally was like, <gasps> you can't upload footage you haven't watched. You can't upload footage. You, like my brain like exploded. I was like, you can't upload footage. You haven't, you, I, even the, like the interview that I did with Ale Alexander, which was amazing and so much fun. And I have her book back there. Now I edited that. Like I didn't edit anything out, but I mean, I edited between multiple cameras. Like I downloaded from Zoom and it was like, we have two camera angles. And I was like, oh. You do. Like, I could have just left that as one take. And I was like, but we have multiple camera angles. And then I was like, and also I want to cut in her song. And also I can put images. And it turned into like, an, it turned into a whole thing when I didn't have to. I've watched interviews on other channels where it's just the Zoom chat. And I enjoy it fine. And I'm like, yeah, this is good. I'm like, why Why can't I do this? And then I'm like, multiple camera cuts. And I've, 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 I've accepted the way I am. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> It's all good. I've accepted the way I am. I love, I love editing. I love it. It's one of those things that when I remember my husband and I got together because I was talking it up and I was like, editing is creating your own story and you can make the world you want. And he was like, show me. And so I, I edited it for him and he was like, this is really boring. And I was like, yeah, it is to most people. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Mm 
Why is next Superman's girlfriend Lois Lane? I don't know, but she's not done getting married. I'm happy to say I, it's, I saved some full on marriages. Like we're not done with her properly getting married. Like there are full weddings that we have yet to see. We will get there. We will. There is, there is more Lois. There's more Lois to be had. There's also a whole bunch of Superman red and blue stuff I need to do and just like everything, all of the things. I have videos for days. <laughs> Let's see. Future Quest. Oh my God, Future Quest. <laughs> Johnny Quest. Oh, have any of you ever gone back and watched like 60s Johnny Quest? It's, um, it's a bit rough, but I have 90s Johnny Quest to watch, so it's fine. <laughs> oh. Catwoman video, so much, so much stuff to do. I am, um, I hopefully have um, some more interviews to do. Uh, the collab I'm doing with Watchtower Database, my my part's done, so that's going to be up in a little bit. I'm excited about that. I'm going to be, oh, I'm going to be on the Backtrekking podcast. I'm very excited because I get to talk about one of my favorite Star Trek episodes. They sent me the PDF of which episodes weren't taken and. None of the ones I wanted to talk about were, which was good but bad because also I was like, oh, I like so many things. So I had to narrow it down. But I found um, but I I finally picked one. I'm really excited to get to talk about Trek. I don't I don't think I really ever talk about it on here, but I love Star Trek so much. So I'm so stoked to be able to, and there are comics like I could, but I don't know, it hasn't come up yet. So I'm really excited to be able to talk about, about Star Trek. I love so many, I love too many things. <laughs> Oh, which episode <laughs> I chose hollow pursuits season three, episode 21, the next generation, the one that episode, the one that introduces Reginald Barclay, the hollow deck, uh, the hollow deck addiction episode. That's the one I picked. And that's what I'm going to talk about. So I'm not going to talk about it here because zip backtracking. That's what we're doing. So, <laughs> Oh. oh, so I'm very, very stoked. I'm always so happy when people reach out to me, like via email. I'm like, yay, I have you. It's like getting a letter. Like, woo, I have mail. Oh, there we go. I actually have Star Trek. Okay, you can't see them. They're off over there. There is a Star Trek corner that's not set up yet because one of my other obsessions is Star Trek and I collect some, I collect Star Trek tie-in novels. There was a phase when I was younger, my dad would take me just around to different cities to different used bookstores so I could try and find as many Star Trek tie-in novels as I could from like the older ones that were hard to find at the time because this was, you know, pre-big internet shipping days. Like it was around, but it wasn't as big as it was now. So like you actually had to go and, and look for them. And so I did and I have a huge collection of them over there, there are some comics in there too. Just all of all of the things. One day I will have a shelf for my Star Trek things. And that will be exciting. And it will be um, it will be over there. <laughs> and you will not see it. So it doesn't matter. I also um, have a poster coming that's one of those um, old school wrestling posters. Like, you know, like tonight, so-and-so versus so-and-so. And it's Kirk versus the Gorn. And I'm really stoked for it. <laughs> I'm really excited for it. It's so silly. Oh. Let's see. Huh. I always divert. That's the thing with these. I always end up diverting. There is, there's too much for a linear, there's too much going on for like a linear track for a very long time. But I will say and reiterate for um, if, if um, the, I will say and reiterate, it's worth it. This is, I don't, I don't recommend things all the time. Like you should, because you can do whatever you want, do what you want. But I think, I think in my humble opinion that this is worth your time. And I think some people pass it up because of the whole, like, you know, like Hannah Barbera tie in or like the really simplistic, like Snagglepuss is a gay Southern playwright. I think some people might, might kind of pass it over and be like, eh, but it's, it's really, it's more than you probably think it is looking at it. You know, it's, it's more than its description. It's more than its cover. It's more than the concept. So I would say for that, it's worth it. It is a pleasant depth filled surprise, you know? <laughs> oh. Oh. 
Let's see. Hanna Barbera Beyond in general for me was a pleasant surprise. I thought it was I thought it was fun. Just a, a fun a fun thing to do. Same with the Looney Tunes crossovers, although those really those really varied. Some of those really worked and some of them some of them not so much in in my opinion. Like people go gaga for like the Elmer Fudd one, but for me, since that's just a retelling of the movie Laura, because I also enjoy a film more. Um, I was kind of like, I watched Laura, like this is fine, but it, you know, I could also just be watching Laura. And <laughs> Let's see. What was my favorite of the Hanna-Barbera comics? Um, since I'm such a big Scooby-Doo person, I liked Scooby-Doo Apocalypse. I really did. You know, I know some people thought that one was weird and they were like, why are like, they're all weird. And I, but I thought it was, it was cool. It was like a zombie apocalypse AU kind of fic. And I'm a big, I'm a big pro fanfic style person. So I'm, I'm here for it. <laughs> I have <having> some Murgatron. <laughs> the fact that they worked that in and it, it felt, it felt like it belonged there was, was really good. They worked, it, all of the stuff from, is worked in here. It is so well crafted and how it utilizes the characters that were around and how it builds its world, both, both on the historical elements and the cartoon that it's pulling from. It's, it's just well crafted. It's just good. You know, it's well crafted. <laughs> appreciate, I, I appreciate it. I really do. Yeah, dinosaur sprinkles. I agree. You could you can feel it when like a creator is really into it, and like you could feel the love that the creator had for this project. It was like when I was talking to Alexandra about Black Canary. You can tell when the person is really really into it. It's the same with the other interview I'm trying to set up for a uh, a horror comic. It's like I love talking with people who are really passionate about the project that that they're working on. It's it's a lot of fun and you get some really interesting conversations and insights that way. Yes, they are. The taglines are both in Latin on the cover. They're um they're down here. They're probably not going to focus cuz my webcam just wants to focus on my face. But they're down there. You have both um Murgatroyd ad calium and Exitus sana sinestrum down there. So that's also a nice touch there again, just all the little touches like that doesn't need to be there at all, but it is. And it adds this nice extra layer to it. Oh, Alfie, if you missed the first um, book clubby bit, do not worry. It will be up. I, I leave all of, all of these up so you can Come back and relive. I don't know. I do that. Does anybody else rewatch like live streams and podcasts? I do that. I don't know. <laughs> uh. Yeah, I do. I'm a, I'm a big rewatcher. <laughs> oh, good times. Hmm. The votes are always so interesting over in the members, in the members tab. Like, I remember when I first posted this book, I got some comments of, oh, that's never going to win. And, you know, don't, don't count your choice out. Don't, don't count your choice out. You know, you never know the luck of a lousy cat. As my mom used to say, I don't fully know what it means, but I understand the sentiments. <laughs> oh. I would love to get to a point where I could do like a, a weekly live stream just because I enjoy weekly live streams. It's just like, it's something to look forward to. It's like, yeah, tonight's the night of blanks on every live stream in existence. And I'm, I'm going to watch it. So I would love to get for a bit like that. Let's see. I do time travel to past streams. <laughs> Let's see. 
No, I think, I think for me, like, I know there's more to talk about. Like, I know I only skimmed the surface. There were more depths to be plumbed. And st there's just so much. There's so much in here. And I know that I only, you know, skimmed the, the first bit of the surface. But I hope it was enough to, you know, get you get you interested and like, you know, give an opportunity for people who had some of those more in-depth things to say to chat with each other. Because, yeah, I just really like this work. And I was glad when it won the vote. And I like being able to draw some some attention to it. You know, it's fun to be able to highlight comics. Because, like I said, they so many of them fall down the memory hole so fast. And it's just there is so much stuff out there. There is, there's so much. there. It, when I go to Comixology, it's just, for me at least, it's overwhelming the amount of content being produced. And it's like, how could anybody consume all this? Like, it's just not possible. There are some terrible things and amazing things that people are just never going to see, like ever. <laughs> Let's see. Hmm. Oh no, I'm not, I'm not done as of yet. I think I just have snaggle pussed myself out. Exit stage left for snaggle puss. Sometimes he exited other ways, you know. He also exited stage right and stuff on the um on the cartoon. And he would do that cute little like like you know, the big full body exit, which was really cute. Let's see. Yeah, too many comics to read too little time. There is no time. Oh, over on my coffee, which I, because I also have a coffee, sometimes I will do little tiny mini reviews of stuff that I have like just looked at or had like a thought on, but it's not enough to either do a video or there's no time for it as of yet. So you can follow me on there too. I also have like, you can like donate there too for people who don't want to use the uh, the YouTube system for whatever reason. But I also do like little tiny postings on on there as well if I have the time to read. Like I read Harley Quinn one, the Stephanie Phillips and Riley Rossmo one, but didn't have any time to talk about. It. Just wanted to make a quick note about. You no, know, that's just to ask a question, like how people feel about um, Rossmo's art because I know it's very heavily stylized, and so it's not for um, for everyone. I, I feel like it really works for some things and not so much for others. And I'm not just standing because he's also Canadian. And I'm like, because there's a stereotype about Canadians that we need to always identify when somebody else is Canadian and be like Canada. And it's one of the stereotypes that's true. I hate it. I hate that it's true. <laughs> Whenever I see like Canadian, I'm like, a fellow Canadian. <laughs> oh. Some stuff falls down the memory hole, like Hal Jordan on soap. You know, somebody made a comment on that video where, and it was something that I legit had never thought of, which was the fact that nobody went to check on him. And I was like, oh my God, that's true. That's horrible. You know, John Stewart showed up and was like, oh, I'm here because the ring is supposed to get me if he's incapacitated. And then nobody went to check. And I was like, oh, that's wrong. <laughs> How long did he lay there? <laughs> Just, <whoa. laughs> I mean, oh man, it was, you know, and I was like, that's an angle, you know, all of, I've read this story more than once. And I never thought about how lying there on his bathroom floor while they go to try and deal with the key master doing whatever he's doing, the key. <laughs> oh. Let's see. Oh. Now that I've done Stephanie Brown, I feel like I want to do um some of the other, because I got some comments on that that were like, who's misfit? And I'm like, let me, t <laughs> let me tell you all about these characters that don't want to like, seems to remember. <laughs> there are so many characters out there. There really is, I feel like, a character for, for everybody. There is just, there are so many, there have been so many, so many comics, so many years, so much stuff to talk about. Never ending stream and supply of, of stuff. <laughs> oh, a harsh tiny manticore. He's the second worst human lantern. Then who is the worst? <laughs> oh, harsh. It's getting harsh in the chat. <laughs> 
Mm. There's a bunch of uh, omnibuses that are coming out soon that I've uh, wish listed that to bookmark for myself, but I'll probably only be able to get one. So I'll probably pick up Tom Strong because Tom Strong is something that would be <laughs> McReese guy that would be fun to talk about. It's one of those ones and I'll let people talk about Tom Strong. So I'm like, yeah, Tom Strong. Tom Strong would be really interesting to, to highlight. Also somebody, uh, I watched the Suicide Squad trailer and my husband was like, who's Starro? And I was like, let me tell you about Starro. <laughs> it's so good to do these streams so I don't have to bother him all the time with like, I need to talk about comic things. And he's like, I don't care. <laughs> I saw in the comments of one of the videos that someone was like, is her husband a unicorn? I feel like he doesn't exist. I wanted to get him to write me a joke note before he left with the um, with the girls today. It's like a note that's like, I exist, because that would make it seem even more like he didn't exist, which would be really funny. But <laughs> uh, Omnibuy? Yeah, is it om Omnibuy? Omni multiple Omnibus? I, on the bus, yeah. They're great too, because if you're a bootleg like me and you need to prop things up, like say it's a teleprompter or whatever, you can put them on the on because they're so tall. <laughs> Who needs fancy things when you can just stack all your omnibus on top of each other? That's what the people do. You make it work. You use what you can. You use what you got. Yeah, McReese, you've seen Mr. Shipper. You know he's real. He exists. He's a real person. He's just never been on here. <laughs> we have talked about Snagglepuss. We didn't mention that he's basically Tennessee Williams, but that is one of the notes that's in the back. I mentioned that there are historical notes. It tells you about that back here, that he is inspired by Tennessee Williams and that also Huckleberry Hound is inspired by William Faulkner, which means that if you read Huckleberry Hound's book, just like Faulkner's, there's almost no punctuation and every sentence goes on forever. I remember reading um, Faulkner in university and it was like, just don't mind that the sentence goes on for like eight pages. I'm like, oh my God, the sentence is never ending. I shouldn't talk because that's how I talk, but it's distressing to read. <laughs> Put a comma, man. End this sentence. Oh. <laughs> it is, again, it's great. Like, this kind of stuff. Like, these are little things. This doesn't have to be there. There are tons of, of books that are playing with the actual historical things that don't put them there. It doesn't need to be there. Or that the editors don't allow to be put there. However the process works. So it's, you know, it's it's really cool to have that and helpful. I appreciate, I appreciate you. <laughs> oh. oh, let me see if they have one for Quick Drama Gras. I don't think they do though. Because Quick Drama Gras is basically there because he is like the leader, you know, that's the start of the show. Oh, here he is. They only, the only, no, the note they have about Quick Drama Gras is about how it was his show that Snagglepuss first debuted on, which is true as Snaggletooth, the orange mountain. <laughs> it's, looking at Snaggletooth is always weird and like, no, that's not right. <laughs> when you get used to seeing a character one way and then you see them like in some like proto way, you're like, no, I don't like that. No, thank you. I don't want it. <laughs> Take it back. <laughs> Take it back. <sighs> they also did sign language in um, Briefly and Infinite frontier zero i'm reading the chat for those who are like what is that was not a segue no <laughs> but um for um yara and her and her aunt that's a series i'm looking forward to i'm looking forward to the um wonder girl series some people are like how dare you wonder woman i'm like no but the series is before that so it's it's wonder girl <laughs> mm. There we, yeah, my husband's foot was on a stream once. That was back when we were downstairs, downstairs things before this upstairs area was at least quasi set up because you can see that it's not fully set up as of yet. Probably won't be this year, but that's fine. It's all good. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, Harvey Birdman. I love Harvey Birdman. I don't think there was a Snagglepuss appearance on that though. At least if there was, I don't remember it. 
And if there was, and someone needs to go edit the <laughs> Wikipedia article and add it on, but I don't remember it. So, oh, this cover is dark. This is one of the darker ones. It's so good though. But let me let me pull it up for you again, even though you probably won't be able to focus on it. But this cover here is oh, yeah, it focuses for this one is and it's so haunting with the the noose and they're good covers. They're really good. Oh. Good. So, we, so far, this means we've done one a bit more. They're they're both mainstream. Like neither of these are super obscure, but we've done more. One more mainstream, like Batman Elseworld story. We've done a kind of niche side project thing. What should we focus on next? We got real obscure. <laughs> I think clearly I need to focus on something with a less depth because I, I feel bad for not being able to highlight all of the really awesome, you know, with themes that, that went, you know, through this and especially with all the, the changing, you know, discussions surrounding like LGBTQI, like a plus discourse that th this handles so, so well. So, you know, but <laughs> huh. Where do I buy this? Um, you can get it. Uh, you can get it off of Comixology. You can get it off of Amazon or whatever your local bookstore is. Like for us, it's Indigo or Chapters. I think down there it's like Barnes and Noble or something. So, let's see. So there are, there are lots of places and it's still, it's one of those ones that's still in print. So you don't have to go and do some intense eBay scrounging or anything like that. Like you need to do for Stephanie Brown, the first volume. Okay. It's one of those things like the second volume is still in print, or at least I've seen it in print up here, but the first one, you got to go on a bit of a quest, you know, like I'll trade you my teen Titans for your, for your background <laughs> kind of thing. Hmm. Is this standalone? No, um, but, I mean, like, there's a continuation, but I mean, you can just read this on its own, but like, there's a, there's a, like, a sequel thing to it. Hmm. So, yeah, yes, we have, we have discussed the, the Snagglepuss Chronicles. Do you feel like the Chronicles in the, um, in the title is appropriate? I do. I feel like it really, it really works for the way that the story is, is told. I'm slipping through it one last time. I'm like, is there anything else? <laughs> oh. I'm going to reread this again soon. This is, uh, firstly, it's going to, it'll probably end up on the shelf that you can't see because there's more space on it. But this is definitely going to be reread again, again, very soon. Although I can say that because it is a bit heavy, I can see potentially needing to be in like the right headspace or mood before, before you read it. But you know, never know. <laughs> Exit stage left. I actually have to exit to my left. You won't see it, but I will be exiting stage left when we <laughs> when we do actually exit. Snagglepuss made a non-speaking cameo in the Harvey Bird Minute. Was he in that episode? I watched that episode the other night. I'll need to rewatch that. I'll need to rewatch that and like see. Edgar Aya Barreno. Thank you. Always wondered what the bottom poster on the wall next to you is. It's killing me. Oh, <laughs> I've um, I've shown it before, but you can't see it. I won't be able to show it to you, but I will tell you. It is a Starry Night poster, but it's recreating the scene from The Dark Knight where the Joker is sticking his head out of the police car. So that's what that is. It was supposed to be the Homelander poster, but the Homelander was so late. And I've told the story before on our members behind the scenes, but he was so late. And I was sad that my wall was, was bare that my husband surprised me by getting a bunch of posters and then putting them up for me. And there was a couple more. So it was really sweet of him. The Homelander is here now, but because that's on the wall and I really like how it looks, he has no home. So he's actually over there on the, that's the, that's part of the paper that you're seeing because it's not, it's not a parchment poster. It's kind of on a, a bit of a, it's kind of a linen-y type of almost like a tapestry. <laughs> it looks like a tapestry 
type thing. So he's he's over there. I need to find a place to to put that poster up because I'm like I waited forever. It was trapped at the border forever. And I'm like it's finally here. And now I feel like I should just get up and show it to you just because, you know, I'm like, he's never, he's never been seen. I posted one picture and stuff. And then I posted a picture of it on my Instagram and someone's like, I thought you didn't watch any. I was like, I never said that. <laughs> Why does everybody think that? Oh, but it was really, it was really sweet. So all of the posters that are actually even up here behind me, are ones that that he that he got for me because I was set. So <laughs> it was it was really sweet. No. And he listens he listens to me to me prattle on about all of the the comic stuff despite not being really into it. So I really do appreciate that. It's nice. <laughs> oh. Is that an alias on the book? Yeah it is. It's yeah. Yeah, it is. Oh, they're jutting out because I had to move them the other day to put up to do a teleprompter thing. Because I had to actually be looking at the camera the whole time, which I don't normally have to be. And I was like, I need my teleprompter. <laughs> oh, Fun fact, you can get many a, te a free teleprompter app um, online. So don't don't go spending hundreds because I've seen those ones that are like a hundred or something. So you don't need you don't need to free. <laughs> Oh. oh, I like, I never, I never use a teleprompter unless I have to. I do not, I don't enjoy it. I don't enjoy a teleprompter. Teleprompter Sasha is a different person than recording how I normally do Sasha. Teleprompter Sasha turns into a presenter. I, um, I, you, you, you've seen teleprompter Sasha if you used to watch Top 10 Nerd because I, um, I use it. There was a teleprompter there. And it's just the presentation style is different because you are presenting. Like when you're reading it, you become a presentation person and even your voice changes. I don't know if you notice it, but I can I can do the voice because I know what I sound like. It's, hi there, I'm reading this to you live coming at you from the Coconut Club. I don't know if I'm making up a club. <laughs> I don't know. But you know, my, even my voice changes and it's like, Hi, I'm a different person now. I'm the peppy voice that I give to the wasp. Woo! <laughs> oh. <clears throat> Let's see. You Oh, you want to see him? I'll go get him. Why not? Oh, hold on. I need to move, though. I need to move. I'm going to get him. Entertain yourselves. Oh. Ow. He's over here. Here he is. <laughs> it's um yeah. I need to find a spot for him. I don't know where he's gonna go. He's gonna go somewhere. Oh it's good. It's a good it's a good poster. Man, just need to find a need to find a spot for it to go, but I feel like it doesn't match the color scheme at the corner there anymore, which is why he hasn't gone there. You can live over here for a minute. Ugh. No, I like the Starry Night on the set because it's a nice contrast because everything in the room is so yellow because I have the yellow walls and the light coming in and stuff that it provides a nice color contrast. So it's, he'll, he'll need to find some other space. He'll, I'll find a place for him. It's going to be okay. The Homelander will have a home. <laughs> Wherever it goes, it'll stare at you. No, it won't. Because if you notice, the eyes are slightly off to the side. So it doesn't have that whole, it's not following you. It might look like, it's not, it's not, trust me. It's not following you around the room. Don't say that to me. I won't be able to put it up. I think it's looking at me all the time. <laughs> Don't do it. <laughs> I won't be able to do it if I think it's always looking at me. Huh. Oh, Lala, thank you very much. That is the cutest little ninja puppy I think I've ever seen. <laughs> That's so cute. Thank you very much. <laughs> we need to find a small club in the middle of nowhere called the Coconut Club. <laughs> oh. But yeah, I need like, any like nerdy thing. There's one thing that's going to come on the set because it's broken. But at a value village, I found a little Harley Quinn figurine but the, the hammer had broken off 
And so it just needs to be glued back together. So once I eventually have time to, to glue it, then I will find a place to put her that's on the set because it's super cute. So it deserves to be, to be showcased. I like having all the little cute, like little Funko things, but the Funko-ness has gotten like out of control. Like I was at an EA games the other, it, was I, what's it called? I don't know, some game store, but it was all, it was just like all Funkos. The whole wall was just like barely games, only Funkos. And I was like, this is a lot of Funkos. <laughs> just, whoa. <laughs> I love Valley Village too. Valley Village is great. Thrifting and like you find that. Thank you, EB Games. You see? <laughs> Do you even game, bro? Yes, but I buy them off Steam. <laughs> oh. No, it's true. Funkos are everywhere. The toy store, just all of all of the places. I'm so glad that my daughter hasn't really taken too much of an of an interest in them. Let's see. Huh. So, vis a vis, uh, if we end up do doing a uh, weekly live stream. Should we do the like a topic live stream? Should we do the randomness thing? I'm I'm kind of pro random. So, you know, let's see wherever our whims kind of take us. That's the kind of flow that I am it's shaking because there's a weird piece of tape here that I'm pulling off. I don't know why it's here, but it is. And it's bothering me. So, I am taking it off. There we go. It's free now. Ha. <sighs> let's see. Oh, thank you again, third person infamous. Yeah, I like random. I like random and just seeing like whatever we feel like talking about. I think it'd be a nice way too to be able to highlight some random like single issues or things that happened that week or like whatever. Hopefully at some point in the future, that'd be fun. It's nice, you know, it's nice to be able to chat about stuff like that. Nice to be able to talk to all of to all of you. It's it's always a good time, and I always appreciate you turning out and the like. It's always a good time, Mister Third. Thank you very much. Pro random. <laughs> Definitely random. <laughs> Oh, one of the things I wish I could do is I wish you could stream those like telltale like Batman games and stuff. But I think the the like they're pretty intense about taking things down because I have never had more fun than when my horrible life choices are destroying Bruce Wayne's life in the telltale games. <laughs> I'm atrocious. I'm an atrocious Bruce Wayne. Every decision I make is like this person will remember that this person is going to remember that. And I'm like, I am destroying this man's life. <laughs> It would be so fun to do that on stream. I, I love, I actually enjoy streaming games a lot. My other channel, I uh, streamed a bunch of uh, kind of dating sims and visual novels, and it's just a lot of fun. It's so, the, the choices are great because everybody's yelling at you. And it would be so fun to be able to do that. <laughs> be like, what are you doing? Stop ruining his life. <laughs> oh, so good. <laughs> Oh, I know. darkness, no parents. <laughs> Those games were fun. That was, they were a fun addition. Every now and again, I go into like the indie sphere to see if there's anything even like tan tangentially like comic book or superhero related, because I know it would be such a pivot, but it would be so fun. It would be so fun to, to stream a, a game again. I love game streams. And I love watching them and just everything. Ah. <laughs> Uh, Kenta's living his best life, Christina. That was from uh, we've played on my other channel. We played some we played some raunchy dating sims. We it's when I say not for kids, I mean it. I'm not playing around. You know, some people like designate that. They're like, oh, I just want to get into it. No, I mean it. I'm just do adults. <laughs> We're adults. <laughs> uh. <clears throat> huh. Yeah, but 
I think we're winding down and I want to thank all of you for coming and and hanging out and talking snaggle plus and i hope it was interesting i know it wasn't exactly like the most in-depth analytical piece that it could have been and again maybe someday i will sit down and talk about it in depth but i'm not sure but again i'm really happy that i was just able to highlight it and i hope that all of you enjoyed talking about it reading it maybe if some of you i saw some of you were gonna pick it up so if you pick it up and like please feel free to come back and drop in the in the comments like what you thought of it and the, yes i'm wearing the tape that i pulled off of the thing it's on my finger now but so please feel free to do all of that i would love to hear more about what you thought about snagglepuss I hope that you had a good time doing like read it, reading. I hope you had a good time reading it. I hope you had a good time watching this. I hope you had a good time hanging out as I did to all three of those things. I will be posting another, another like choice poll over on the membership tab so that we can do another vote probably in the next couple of days after I sort out what type of work I want to see if we're going to discuss. And yes, Thank you very much. I will leave this up. So if you're just coming in or you missed it, it will be there for you to watch at your leisure or rewatch or whatever you feel like doing. So I'm going to exit stage left. That's my left. I'm going to exit stage left. So thank you so much. And of course, I will see you all again soon in an upcoming video, which you know, you know me, it'll be very soon. So thanks so much. Enjoy the rest of your day, night, evening. Keep reading comics, doing whatever. And yeah, bye-bye. <laughs>